Christina. Christina, and um, what's the problem with your arm? Uh, so the medics think it's a possible break of plexus neuritis. Right. So inflammation of the nerve coming down, possibly in there, and the nerve coming down. So I've got constant pins and needles in my hand, I've got muscle wasting in mm. there, and so between right. the, the Yeah, nerves. okay. Yep. It looks like pain has subsided, but I've had to go back onto painkillers, so I don't know how much of that is masking. Right. Um, Shouldn't be hard to fix this one, hopefully. Mm -hmm. e now the reason that sound is used is, uh, if you can imagine crossing a road, you're crossing a road, there's a screech of brakes, you turn around, the car's about to hit you, the natural human response is to go, ah, waiting for impact. Mm -hmm. And what happens in life, we might have a big bill might arrive, ah, we're late for work, ah, M25, uh, yeah, and we forget to go and release this stuff and it gets stuck somewhere in our body. The right shoulder is a responsibility to do with the future. All right, so there'll be something in Christina's life that she's been feeling responsible for. She might be upset, but it's not really her responsibility. She had to take it off somebody else, but it's causing her some pain. Now, in physical life, without you sharing details, is there something like that in your life where you've had to take on responsibility for somebody else, but it wasn't really your responsibility? Uh, a long time ago, yes. Yeah, cool. So the reason the sound works is, if you can imagine holding a cup of water, and the water is like emotion, and all of a sudden there's a vibration, and the water starts to slosh out. That's what the vibration does to the cells. What they're holding on to energetically starts to come away. And as it starts to come away, the cells start feeling a bit better. And as they start feeling a bit better, their own intelligence, because every cell in your body's got intelligence, they start to realize, oh, that feels better. Let's let some more go. And before you know it, that's when you get a very, very fast healing because all the cells suddenly realize, oh, hell, that's what was causing the pain. Let's let go of this stuff. And mostly it will be emotion, but sometimes it will be thoughts, but mostly it's an old emotion, right? He's got a hammer and chisel coming out now to release something in that shoulder. Mm -hmm. e Christine, I'm just going to get you to notice how your fingers are feeling. Is there any difference there? Shaky. They weren't shaky before, right? No. No, that's a good sign. Um, that's the energy gosh. going through. <laughs> um, yeah. I still got the pins and needles are still there, but yeah, so very. Um, yeah. That's good. Let that happen. There's real tremor going happen. on that. That's <laughs> good. That's getting the good energy back in there. E now, while I'm working on Christina, I'm just going to talk about happiness. <coughs> life was to be happy. Yeah? And we'd have big philosophical discussions when I was 13, 14. He decided the meaning of life, the purpose of life was to be happy. And I wasn't sure he got that right. So I went looking as a 13 year old would for contrary evidence and I found a quote by Einstein, widely regarded as one of our foremost thinkers, uh, that said that he considered that purpose of human life was not happiness, that happiness as a purpose was more suited to cows chewing cud <laughs> in a paddock, and that maybe the human purpose should be higher. So I shared that with my dad. My dad's view was he knew God wanted him to be happy. How did he know God wanted him to be happy? Well, God had invented beer. <laughs> so therefore, God wanted him to be happy. And that was his, his purpose, was to be happy. I considered that there was a higher purpose. But I am going to focus on happiness, because along that journey, I read a book called The Purpose of Happiness. And I've done quite a lot of reading around happiness. There's a lovely book called Solve, S-O-L-V-E, Solve for Happy. Anybody read that one by Mo Gorda? Mo Gorda is the chief executive officer, or the top man, 
at Google X that are doing all kinds of exciting projects. And, and he starts this book with one of the things in it which I thought was really profound, and it is really, really profound, but it also sounds really, really dumb as well, it's both at the same time, is happiness is an absence of unhappiness. <laughs> <laughs> now that sounds a bit daft at first, but let's go into it a little bit. What Mo explains is that as a baby, the baby is happy until something in that baby's life makes it unhappy. It's hungry, it's thirsty, it needs to sleep and it can't sleep, it's too hot, it's got a dirty nappy. So the default setting for the human race is happiness. That's your birthright. But if there's something in your life making you unhappy, now what is it in our life that makes us unhappy? Well, mostly it's this thing here, isn't it? It tells us that you know we don't earn enough, or they don't love us enough, or whatever. It makes something wrong. And that is what's causing our misery and our grief. We're doing it to ourselves. Our default setting is happy now. One of the things that also happens in our human experience is we get told a lie. We get told that when we've lost a few stones, then we will be happy. We get told that when we get married, then we will be happy. Really? <laughs> we get told when we have a baby, then we will be happy, or when we get the next job, or when we get the McLaren racing car, then we will be happy. Yeah? Well, ever you say a thing has got to happen and then you'll be happy, you give that thing power to make you unhappy while well, ever you've not got that thing. Yeah? So don't. Just choose happiness. When it, whether it rains or pours, I'm going to be happy. Whether I'm late or on time, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> whether I'm healthy or not, I'm going to be happy. Whether I'm in pain or not, I'm going to be happy. Whether I get a healing tonight or not, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> yeah? yeah? <laughs> Choose, choose, choose. Now, how's this hand doing? Um, Prince of Angels is still there. Nice and steady. Um, got a nerve twitching away now. That's cool. <laughs> Something twitching in there, I'm sure what it is. Uh, but, so, the hand doesn't feel very different, but my back does. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> my back feels really relaxed. Cool, awesome. I felt it all. The release, particularly at the bottom of my back, it just all didn't all the tension over there. Yeah. Cool. cool. They're still working on, on this shoulder. So, the purpose of human life isn't happiness, but we can all have happiness straight away. You can just choose that no matter what happens in your life, if you've got mounting credit cards, you can still be happy. Choose happiness and then decide, okay, what, a uh, little story, uh, we were doing some uh, group channeling session, so medium should be talking to the step, channeling is talking to like, a master, an advanced being, and bringing through information, and we were channeling a being as a group, and my mum decided, let's, let's find out the meaning of life, our full question, so we asked, what's the meaning of life? And the answer came through with a group of seven. And one person got a word, then somebody else did. And life has no meaning. We're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Save the meaning you give it. You give your life meaning. You give your life meaning. You decide what your life's going to be about, whether it's going to be a love story, or a comedy, or a drama. Yeah, you get to choose. You get to choose. I did a workshop in a little place called Palmerston, no it wasn't Palmerston, it was Hamilton in New Zealand, and my PA was on the workshop, and during one of the experiences she heard one of the surgeons talking to her, and as she came out of it, what had been said was really profound, but she wanted to know, how do I know that's not my imagination, how do I know I can just make that up, and that's what I wanted to hear, and so she asked the surgeon, Dr. Rostow, she said, how do I know I'm not making it all up? And his response was this, my dear, you're making it all up. Your whole life you've been telling yourself a story about who you are and what this life is about. You're making it all up. There's the reality, but five different people in a room would all give a different version.
version of reality. You're telling yourself an internal story about who you are, what you hear, whether tonight's a good experience or not, whether the room's too hot or too cold. Yet, you're doing that 24-7, you're telling yourself a story, it's not the actual truth. Right, how are we doing? <coughs> All right, so some time will need to evolve and you'll have to let us know if that strength has returned and how those areas are feeling. Okay. Cool. Yeah, give a round of applause.